Welcome to Links to Leadership, an insider's guide to what makes for a good business relationship with iconic business leaders and CEOs who share their secrets to success. Links to Leadership is brought to you by Administaff. Small business is good for America, and Administaff is good for small business. So I chided and kidded Rick Alden that his Skullcandy staff was actually a very fascinating amalgamation of talent, blending some very interesting and unusual types. Some look like snowboarders, others like skateboarders, and others still like surfers, and one or two that maybe could have been out of prison on a work release program. So how did this most interesting and successful CEO acquire his staff, and what characteristics does and did he look for? Okay, you want to know how shallow we get around here? Yeah. <laughs> if they show up with their shirt tucked in, they're probably not going to get the job. Uh, if they show up in a suit or with a tie, they, uh, you know, they're probably not going to get past reception. We don't care where they flew them in from. So, uh, but we're probably not out recruiting the kind of guy that would tuck his shirt in. We're not recruiting the kind of guy. We, we become pretty targeted in our recruits. We know, hey, if we need a new uh, product development engineer, we're not going to hire from a company where, you know, uh, the standard issue is tuck your shirt in and put a tie on. Uh, there's not somebody that would understand the brand that we're developing here. It's easy now, right, with the numbers you're doing, to hire the best people. What was it like back then to find the best people on a budget, and what advice would you give to young entrepreneurs in the same boat? It's a great question. You know, uh, early on, um, we didn't always say hire the very best guy. It was, in the early days, it was hire the best guy that we could afford. I would say this, that having gone from being able to afford the best $10 an hour guy that we could hire to just simply the best guy that we can hire because now we've reached you know, some scale. We're not, by no means we're a really big company, but at least we have the ability to hire some guys and pay competitive wages. I would say this, very seldom do we overpay for a guy. So even if we are paying a guy out of what we believe a competitive range would be and we're paying either top or above top of competitive range for a guy, if you're hiring a guy that good, they tend to always deliver more than what you would have got by just saying, no, I'm only willing to pay up to this amount for the salary. So uh, your question was, what advice would I give? Um, take a risk on people. Overpay for a guy that you didn't think that you could afford, but a guy you really, that has really performed in that position for somebody else that you respect um, you know, uh, prior, someone that really brings that level of experience. Because it's very rare, I find, that you overpay for a guy. And here's a piece of clarity, real clarity. We, we use this phrase around here, hire slow, fire fast. So you make sure that you've really vetted the process. You've seen all the candidates. You don't hire the first guy that shows up. You don't hire your buddy's buddy. You go out and you find, you spend time to find the best guy. Overpay for that guy if he's the best guy. But if you are overpaying and he is costing your organization money and he's underperforming, there's this point of clarity where you say, not performing, overpaid, I can now get to the second half of that, which is fire fast.